In this video, I'd like to demonstrate the process or the ideal scan strategy for scanning a model. So, just so I can talk whilst I'm um, going through the process and we can look at the, the uh, process in detail from several angles, I just thought it'd be more convenient to work with a stone model and just a uh, demo uh, scanning tip. So, there are three stages to our scan strategy. Stage one, scan the occlusal surface. And then the other two stages are to scan buccal and lingual. In the case of a lower arch, we'll scan, the second stage will be the buccal scan, rolling around to the labial scan and buccal again, and then we go lingual. On the upper arch, we take it like so, we do the occlusal scan, then the buccal scan and labial scan, and then the palatal scan. So let's look at each one in a little bit more detail. The most important thing we need to consider is our occlusal scan. It's really important that we get a good, strong occlusal scan because it becomes the structural framework, the skeleton of our scan. If we get a bad occlusal scan, the whole art scan could be prone to error. And the good thing is it's easy to identify if we do have these errors, but at the same time, we want to make sure we avoid it in the first place. So with this scanning tip in place, we start at the posterior region of the arch, either on the left or right hand side, it doesn't really matter. And we sweep forward. We start scanning and we sweep forward. And when we get to the anterior region, then we like to rock. We like to rock the tip forward and back slightly, ever so slowly, just in order to capture more than just the incisal edge. Because of the shape of an incisor, it's a long, um, effectively pointed tooth. The incisal edge is a very small area, whereas when, as we rock, we're building up some more three-dimensional information of that tooth, both on the, the lingual side and the labial side. And then we sweep backwards and capture the occlusal surface on the remaining portion of the arch. At that point, we can roll over and start scanning the lingual surface and sweep around the lingual surface. And there are two, two things that we need to watch out for here. One is the tongue. We can use the tip as our cheap retractor, a tongue retractor, shall I say. If we can just gently ease over the occlusal surface and get that corner of the tip in to the side of the tongue. Now the tongue is on the, it's behind the tip. We're not scanning the tongue. And we sweep around and as we sweep onto the other side, we're maintaining that level of retraction. We could put a mirror in place, we could put a spoon or some way of trying to move the tongue out of the way, particularly if the tongue is, is large. That's another object in the mouth, that's another discomfort for the patient. So we like to avoid that if at all possible. And generally speaking, it is possible. With some experience and technique, we can keep that, use that tip to keep the tongue out of the way. And having completed our lingual scan, we then roll over and do a buccal scan. And it's ideal to rotate the tip as much as possible in order to capture the marginal detail and the proximal detail as well. And we roll over and scan the occlusal, uh, the buccal and the labial detail. Now, of course, it's not going to be comfortable for us. It's not going to be comfortable for the patients. It's not actually physically possible for us to continue scanning like so. So as we start from the posterior region and we sweep forward, come around to the midline. And bear in mind, the patient will be like this. So we scan, roll over, and sweep to the midline. And if we need the patient to move towards us slightly in order to give us better, greater access, let's do that. There's no, there's no problem with doing that. And then we roll over, starting from the, the left-hand side, on the posterior region, occlusal surface, we roll over and sweep forward. And again, if we ask the patient to look away from us, it will allow us to access the, uh, the labial surface, again, with minimal, with minimal discomfort and minimal um, movement uh, on our behalf. So I mentioned there are two key things that we need to watch out for. One was to use the tip to allow us to provide some retraction. But also, the second point is we want to make sure that we don't scan over a tooth. When we're scanning the lingual surface, it is possible that we could scan past the tooth and scan the cheek. If the cheek is there, it's going to scan. That's, that's just part of, part of life. But if we try and keep the tip as far down into the floor as possible, of 
obviously again considering patient comfort well then the, the chances of us scanning past the, the tooth onto the cheek is going to be less. Also when we are doing the buccal surface considering we've done the occlusal, we've done the lingual, we've got really nice scan detail when we roll over to the buccal surface the tongue may still be, may still be accessible to, to scanning. So in order to avoid scanning the tongue and perhaps adding something onto the scan that we really don't want to be there, try and keep the tip as low and to the sulcus as possible. And as we sweep around, again, maintaining the shape of the arch and use that tip as a, as a retractor. Get it in behind the lip and let it do the work. Some people like to use cheek retraction and op, Ivoclar's Optergate. Sometimes people like to use the, the, the more solid cheek retractors. Sometimes they can get in the way. The tip can be the best cheek retractor that you can have once we use it, once we use it well. Another point to watch out for, as we sweep around the floor, it can sometimes be very easy to leave the lip touching against the teeth. So as we sweep the anterior region, sweeping the, the lingual surface of the anterior region, if the lip is sitting up, it's possible that we could, sweep, uh, we could scan past the tooth Onto, and scan the lip as well and again adding this extra detail onto the scan that perhaps we don't want. When scanning the upper arch again we follow a similar strategy. We'll sweep on the occlusal surface and when we get to the anterior region we rock forward and back to capture some of the palatal and labial surfaces and then sweep occlusal. The next step then is to sweep the buccal surface and as we do so again maintaining the, the shape of the arch try and keep the scanner in line in this curved manner in line with the arch and then we can start from the other side occlusal roll over onto the buccal surface and sweep forward and again asking the patient to move um, to, to comply with us obviously the patient, if the patient sitting up the patient will be like like so so we can do our occlusal surface roll over and do buccal ask the patient to look away from us that allows us to capture more of the anterior region. And then the patient looks, as we, we do the other sides, we do the buccal surface, and patient looks towards us, and that allows us to get more coverage without stretching ourselves too much. As we roll over and, then, and do the palatal surface, again, try and keep the scanner nice and high into the, into the palate, of course, again, considering the, the comfort on the patient. And sweep. And we don't want it. we want to avoid sweeping a scanning past the tooth. We want the tip of the scanner to be nice and and away from away from the lip, so nice and deep into the palate, and sweep around. And so you'll see that I'm tipping. I'm using all three motions, so I'm moving in a linear manner, in an arch arc shape, and then I tip the scanner as I sweep around. I tip the scanner as much as possible, and again. If we've got lip, which you should have, and we're not using lip retraction, we should be able to use the scanner in order to keep the lip out of the way. When it comes to doing the occlusal scan, if the patient bites, and we've got cheek and lip, and we then get the scanner in to scan the occlude, to reach, access the buccal surface to carry it to scan, sometimes that can be a little bit uh, uncomfortable. For the patient so a preferred strategy patient opens put the scanner in and, and put the scanner in get it in behind the cheek and then the patient bites and then we sweep forward and we want to sweep forward capturing maybe three or four units but it's very important we capture an equal amount or similar amount on the upper arch and on the lower arch so if rather than continuing to sweep forward 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 capturing more units it's a better strategy to capture maybe four units and then move up, sweep back, move down, sweep forward and capture more of a square image rather than a long, narrow image. And when prompted by the software, we re repeat the process. Patient opens, scanner in on the left hand side, patient bites, of course ensuring that the patient's bite is nice and stable and is, is the bite as you see it and we carry it the second uh, buccal scan for capturing the occlusion. So that's a simple overview. Um, it's obviously nice and easy to talk, show the, show the models and show the scanner in a, a clip like this. But of course, we'll do some live um, scanning as well. 
So I hope you found that useful. Uh, I look forward to presenting more TRIOST um, strategies to you.